Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. Now, a lot of people who comment on the channel say they take niacin instead of NMN or NR as their NAD booster of choice, which is all well and good. However, I came across a study published in February of 2024 that investigated niacin and its links to heart disease. Bear in mind that some longevity type supplements, including things like Nuchido, do actually include niacin as opposed to a different NAD booster. So enough waffling off me, let's jump in and let's take a look at this latest study with regard to niacin and heart disease. Researchers from the Cleveland Clinic have identified a new pathway that contributes to cardiovascular disease associated with higher levels of niacin, a common B vitamin previously recommended to lower cholesterol. The team, led by Stanley Hazen, MD, PhD, discovered a link between 4PY, a breakdown product from excess niacin, and heart disease. Higher circulating levels of 4PY were strongly associated with the development of heart attack, stroke, and other adverse cardiac events in large-scale clinical studies. The researchers also showed in preclinical studies that 4PY directly triggers vascular inflammation, which damages blood vessels and can lead to atherosclerosis over time. The study, published in Nature Medicine, also details genetic links between 4PY and vascular inflammation. The findings provide a foundation for potential new interventions and therapeutics to reduce or prevent that inflammation. And remember, inflammation is also one of the hallmarks of aging. And inflammation of the heart is very rarely a good thing. Dr. Hazen, who is the Chair of Cardiovascular and Metabolic Sciences at Cleveland Clinic's Lerner Research Institute and co-section head of preventative cardiology said, what's exciting about these results is that the pathway appears to have been previously unrecognized, yet it is a significant contributor to the development of cardiovascular disease. What's more, we can measure it, meaning there is potential for diagnostic testing. These insights set the stage for developing new approaches to counteract the effects of this pathway. Niacin is very common in the Western diet. Dr. Hazen noted that for decades, the United States and more than 50 other nations have mandated niacin fortification in staple foods such as flour, cereals and oats to prevent disease related to nutritional deficiency. Yet one in four subjects in these studies cohort appears to be getting too much and had high levels of 4PY, which appears to contribute to cardiovascular disease development. Dr. Hazen compares our intake of niacin to multiple taps pouring water into a bucket. Once that bucket is filled, it begins to spill over. The human body then needs to process that spill over and produce other metabolites, including 4PY. Dr. Hazen stated that the main takeaway is not that we should cut our entire intake of niacin. That's not a realistic approach. Given these findings, a discussion over whether a continued mandate of flour and cereal fortification with niacin is warranted in the US. Here's where Dr. Hazen also highlighted the use of over-the-counter supplements made with different forms of niacin, which have become very popular lately because of their presumed anti-aging properties. He added that everyone should consult with their doctors before taking any over-the-counter supplements and focus on a diet rich in fruit and vegetables while avoiding excess carbohydrates. The new findings might also help explain why niacin is no longer a go-to treatment for lowering cholesterol. Niacin was one of the first treatments prescribed to lower LDL. However, eventually niacin showed to be less effective than other cholesterol-lowering drugs and was associated with negative effects and higher mortality rates. Dr. Hazen went on to say, niacin's effects have always been somewhat of a paradox. Despite niacin lowering cholesterol, the clinical benefits have always been less than anticipated. This is based on the degree of LDL reduction. This has led to the idea that excess niacin caused unclear adverse effects that particularly counteracted the benefits of lowering LDL. We believe our findings help explain this paradox. This illustrates why investigating residual cardiovascular risk is so crucial. We learn so much more than we set out to find. The study authors noted that long-term investigations are needed 
to assess the chronic elevation of 4PY levels on atherosclerosis and other phenotypes. The research is part of Dr. Hazen's ongoing investigation into factors that contribute to residual cardiovascular risk. His team follows patients over time and collects blood samples to find chemical signatures that can predict the development of heart disease. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I'd like to hear from people who do take niacin as their NAD booster of choice. And also, I'd urge those people to investigate what is the recommended daily dose for niacin and then check your one-off if you're taking a specific niacin supplement, what that daily dose is to see if you are actually overdosing. Or if you're taking a Frankenstein concoction of many things that includes niacin in it, also see what that dose is.